All right, everyone. So welcome to Real Women Real Estate Podcast, episode 27. <laughs> Woo! 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 Y'all, I, uh, I know I say this every week, but like this week, I really, really mean it. Um, we have like a super phenomenal guest um, by the name of Lil Portia or Portia Edmond. And she's going to talk about real estate investing with no excuses. Um, y'all are going to see why. But before we jump into who uh, Portia is um, and how she does what she does, you know, we got a quote. And, and Portia, this was inspired by you. So I just hope you can appreciate this. So, Time is an equal opportunity employer. Each human being has exactly the same number of hours and minutes every day. And that's by Dennis Waitley. And yeah, you appreciate that. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> yes. So guys, we kind of stalk this lady uh, <laughs> just a little bit on social media. Um, a lot of her posts that she shared um, really just let us know that we had to have her on our show. Ms. Portia Evan is a prolific real estate investor who is passionate about leveraging business opportunities to invest. After earning her Bachelor of Science degree in geography with a minor in geology from the University of North Texas and working as an environmental scientist, her empathy for problem solving and innovative thinking motivated her to take up a new creative challenge of real estate investing and development. Thus far, she has sealed up approximately 100 wholesale deals via solo or joint ventures, has bought her own land, and is currently working on her first new construction project. Portia has also recently started an association for Black real estate investors with a focus in group economics for development, investing, and education. She also has family business ventures such as vending machines and trucking. She does all of this while holding down a nine to five job as a construction analyst for a federal government agency. Uh, hello, <laughs> no excuses. So thank That's you. That's freaking amazing. That's <laughs> like you. the longest list. That's got to be up there. Well, one of the longest lists we've ever had from a guest. That is pretty That's impressive. So. And just a side note, Portia, you don't know this, but you kind of inspired us early on in our podcast and just by some of uh, like your Facebook comments, like you, you, you mean what you say, like you live by nice. this. Nice. I, I appreciate that. That's dope. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know people like was even like, so I didn't know people were like looking or following it. Um, just people that I didn't know, you know what I mean? So that's pretty dope. I appreciate it. Yes. Your reputation definitely precedes you. So let's jump right in. Can you tell us um, why you chose real estate? Because uh, you have a very different background. So what brought you to this industry? Um, well, okay, so the first thing that brought me there uh, definitely is my grandpa. Uh, he used to do real estate. Uh, when he came back from the military, um, he became a plumber and he started networking with um, other investors. So he would always talk to us about that growing up. Um, as an environmental scientist, um, I was an environmental scientist for commercial real estate developers. So I was just a vendor for them. Like when you do development, and you do the land, you have to do the front part of it before you even start the construction part. So, you know, is that's kind of how I got into it. I saw some numbers on the different side of the transaction and I was like, yo, I'm on the wrong side of this thing. I need to be, you know, on the real estate side and reached out to my grandpa about, you know, more stuff in real estate. And it's kind of how I got on with it, you know, so yeah. That's what's up and I can wholeheartedly relate, you know, from working in real estate, software and like seeing those numbers for those new developments I'm like wait a minute now I see the money I need to touch the money you know what I'm saying right exactly so you still work for the government in the nine to five and you've been very vocal about the fact that you do not have to quit your full-time job to participate in real estate investing so how do you personally manage your nine to five and real estate investing Okay, so my nine to five is definitely different. Um, I mean, it is a government agency that is very flexible, uh, actually, and it's FEMA, uh, for anybody that doesn't know that, but it's FEMA, um, and we call it FEMA flexible, um, because I work, you know, just I work from home, and I can work where I get, you know, deployed, you know, maybe during a disaster, different things like that, but a lot of it is just 
time management. That's literally what I do. Time management, delegating out tasks that um, they can be done during the daytime, you know, like data entry, different things like that. I leverage a lot of relationships with family members, um, different things like that to where, you know, I'm putting them on and, you know, helping them and get an opportunity for them. So you just leverage your time and you delegate. Um, Trellio. I love, love Trillio. It is amazing. And uh, I have a time journal. Uh, I did a time journal for like two years um, to know where I was not being productive and where I was just being busy, you know, busy scrolling IG or Facebook or Twitter, all this stuff. That's not productive hours. That's just busy hours, you know, or sort of say. So I did that for two years. I figured out where my time was being wasted at. And I had to turn that to, you know, make it productive. Um, and I just, I delegate a lot of stuff out. Um, I have BAs um, with the nine to five. Because I'm not full time, I don't have time to play around when I get off of it. So it helps me and like, it pushes me more to where I do what, you know, most full time people are doing. I do it in half the time. You know what I mean? Um, and I do a lot of stuff on the weekends too, so. Okay, so you said a few things that I want you to dive in a little bit deeper on. Okay. okay. First of all, what is Trellio? Okay, so Trellio is like a productivity app. Um, it's literally, I have these boards to where I have like the vending machine, I have the trucking business, I have the, the Black Real Estate Investor Association, and my investing business. So each one of them have their own board. They have members that are assigned to it, which are, are part of my team, maybe PA. It's uh, people that I'm working with, whomever. And then I have a to-do list. I have a doing. I have a done. Uh, you know, it's just different things where you're making it to where, and you move that stuff over. You have deadlines. You know, we're setting time limits. We're setting these things up. And it's to get done. And you can set tasks to certain people. It's just very productive. I love it. Um, I love it. And somebody actually put me onto that who uh, helped me get my personal credit and my business credit together. So that's how I, and it's just, I bought it for the business and it's just, it's perfect for all of them. Yeah. I'm so excited right now because I think one of the, the hard things, you know, when you start taking on new projects and new businesses um, is like you said, time management. And there's not really a lot of people who are very transparent about how they're doing what they're doing. So thank you yeah. for sharing that. And I'm going to mm -hmm. go, is it an app or a website? Yeah, or? uh, it's a website. Okay, so it's an app too, but I like it on the website when you first set up everything because you can see it, it's bigger. Um, but when you're on the go, yeah, use, um, you know, use the app. Um, you know, like I, FEMA is location in Denton but I don't live in Denton so like for me with Trellio um I also have got an office out there just to save time you have to you know what I mean like with time management so when I would get off instead of doing the hour in traffic to commute no I have an office over here where I work it so in a gym too so like it's just use more time per, you know what I mean like just use your time a little bit more wisely you know yeah. And then you said one other thing, you said you did a time journal, like what was, what's that process? Are you just like auditing the time? You say you audit the time you spend on like social media and you hold yourself accountable or did you work with like accountability partner? No, I hold my, I held myself accountable. So when I started investing November, 2016, um, I got let go from the environmental sciences gig and it was like, okay, back against the wall, stuff like that. But as a full-time investor, I've done both. And, and we'll dive into it, I guess, like later, maybe if we have time about why I went back to the nine to five. But um, when I did the time journal, it came from me going to Aria and the, the guru guy or whatever that was talking about it. That's what he suggested because that's what he he would he did. And so when I did it, I was like, it actually works because you start to see where you're just messing up with time. So I would just do every hour of what I was doing. And you will realize like you were, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. No, you're not, you're not busy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're not busy. You just on Instagram for an hour and a half, you look up, now it's nine o'clock and then you're like, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. No, just stop playing or, you know, I don't wanna say, you know, cause I know like PG, whatever, but it's just like, you know, stop BSing and just be serious about what you're trying to be serious about. You know what I mean? And and hold yourself accountable. If you messing up and you on Instagram, stop doing that. 
you know, unless you're putting out digital ads. If you're not putting out digital ads and you're just scrolling, you need to get off of Instagram, you know, so. It's like focus, you know what I mean? This app sounds like it's helping you create a focus. Correct, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I like it. Oh, my toes hurt. You stepping on my toes right now, for sure. What? What stepping happened? Stepping on my toes. <laughs> oh, do you need a time journal? <laughs> I, no. every, I feel like everybody can use a time oh, journal. Y'all? Don't y'all need yeah. a time journal? We do. Yeah, I feel like we could more. all use that. I mean, you're talking to uh, real women, real estate. We're trying to get our stuff together. I mean, I'm listening to you like, man, we could be using some of this stuff uh, for us. So you're you're literally preaching to not just the individual, but the whole group right here. So no, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, just kind of diving into some of the some of the core of what sure. you've been investing in. You know, we kind of talked about how you're managing full time job and real estate, and I love the fact that you're talking about delegation. I selfishly want to find out more about delegation, but for the sake of the real women real estate, let's dive into real estate. Uh, okay. Let's talk about some of your uh, some of your deals, some of your investment deals. You said you've been doing this since 2016. Correct. Let's kind of talk about that deal that got you really motivated and excited. Like this is it. This is okay. this is the thing. This I'm doing it. Okay. Um. So I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say I had a deal that like had me to be like, oh, I'm doing it. Like, yeah. it, because I, I don't, I don't really have any like favorite deals or like anything like that, but I have a deal that like taught me the most, you know what I mean? If it was the most teachable deal that I could. It's a better question. Ones. I like okay. it. Okay. Teach um, us. And, okay. Well, it's, it's, and I like it because. Well, I hated it during the situation because I went through the situation, but it's a teachable moment now because um, a lot of people don't talk about it when newbies are getting into real estate. Um, so this is the deal. So, okay. So I get a lead. It was in a, uh, it was in South Dallas and I'm from South Dallas. So I don't know if y'all know where South Dallas Fair Park is at, you know, I'm from South Dallas area. So um, yes, from- I have my aunt lives in Myrtle. Okay, great. So you definitely know where the area is. So that's where I'm from. Uh, so grew up, born and raised. And so the house is on South Boulevard. Um, it's uh, in the historical district, really nice homes. Um, and I get a lead over there and I find the person. Um, find the person, I get it under contract, 110000 I'm like, oh, okay. So I, when I go into a deal, I have three to five exit strategies. So the first exit strategy, I could have just wholesaled it to him for 210. We had a buyer ready to go. So 110 minus 210, you get the wholesale, you know, do like on the math. So it could be that, or we were going to buy it, fix it up, and then sell it ARV, like on the market, which was around 600000 Because it's a, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And so, uh, so we was going to do that or we were going to buy it for the 110, clean it out, you know, just clean it out. You know what I'm saying? Not really do a lot to it and hotel it. That's still on the market, but it's as is because something across the street has sold as is, I think like 325 or 348, something like that. Right. Because it's a historical district. Those houses over there are worth a lot of money, right? So we go through the whole process. I'm like, all right, you know, bit me, you know, this eat. It was around Thanksgiving. I'm like, oh, this is about to be a crazy Christmas. You know, like it's about to be crazy. So I'm on my way back from Houston. My boyfriend lives in Houston. So that's where I was the environmental scientist. So I'm on my way back from Houston, I'm driving. I get an email and I still got the email to this day. Get an email from my title lady. I love her. Um Portia, uh, as of as of right now, the uh, at the 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 contract on South Boulevard is null and void. She was like, the DA and the federal agents just came into the office, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. My stomach dropped. Like I'm passing, you know, Sam Houston on the way 45 North. Stomach drop. I'm like, what? I'm like, because I'm reading this email. You know what I mean? And so we we're supposed to close that Monday. And then the following Monday after Thanksgiving. So this is the Monday of the week of Thanksgiving. And we're supposed to close after Thanksgiving that Monday. Money was in escrow. Everything was ready to go. 
So she told me the DA was going to call me, all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what is going on? So basically, the seller, the seller had fraudulently deeded over the property into his name. He did not own it. So I always tell newbies and other people when you're getting into real estate and you're wanting to invest, it's risk in this. And you can literally go to prison, you can go to jail, like they don't play about stuff like that. So sellers lie and buyers lie too. So you have to do your due diligence. It was a very teachable moment for me. It's a deal that I'll never forget. Um, and it was just, it was a lot. And actually a year later, I want to say this year, and I posted it in Max Maxwell's group. Um, uh, he was on the news, the guy, the seller. He's on the news, like in, in jail, like in prison. And it was just, it was crazy. But he's deeded a lot of those houses like that into his, like. How? How? Over. Um, I don't even want to know the process. I don't know. I don't know how he deeded it over fraudulently to his name, but from the from the uh the news story basically he was saying it was just super easy he would just do the warranty deed get a notary i guess to notarize it and go to the um go, go, to, and file it. go to the yep go and file it exactly mm -hmm. but he wasn't reaching out to the family or to the people or you know what i'm saying to the actual owners and you can't do that like in the federal agents like and you know i'm a I, like at the time i was working for uh sba i was working for the agency sba so at the time my record like how what i was i was a federal agent mm -hmm. like you know to them you know what i mean the nine to five and so i'm like i have background you know clearances and different stuff like that like i don't be out here doing nothing crazy because i don't look good in orange none of that like i just my husband works for the federal government, so I you know. know what I mean. So I'm like, yeah, no, I can't. I didn't do none of that. <laughs> yeah. Do so like, uh, yeah, but it it was crazy, man. It was it was crazy. So yeah. Wow. Did you actually try to reach out to the the owners to see if they wanted to sell? Because that would have been like, well, let me reach out to the the Girl, owner. Girl, no. And that's what my buyer was saying. My buyer was like, so who actually owned it? I don't know. Don't care. I'm good, homie. You I would care. <laughs> I'm good. And that, cause that for me, it's not worth it because yeah. like, even though that that deal could have like made me, you know what I'm saying? I never seen that, like not at one time, you know what I mean? But it's not so, worth it, man. Like, it's just, sense, I was, it was too good to be true. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like all the red flags, like how fast we were moving, all this stuff for me to get it for 110 is because it was fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Because it was a fraudulent deal. Right. Exactly. That's the most like you know, uh, it's not my favorite deal, but it's the most teachable deal. Like, you know what I mean? Um, out of all the deals I've done, so. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a deal that'll, that'll test, you know, if you really <laughs> about this life, right? <laughs> Cause I probably would've walked away and be like, you know what, this ain't for me. This isn't for me. It's a sign from God. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah. So can you tell us just like from like a high level, what's your process? Uh, when it comes to finding deals, um, sure. how do you go about that? Uh, yeah. So, okay. So my process is to find deals. So I focus on the six D's. So we have like delinquents, defaults, divorce, death, disaster, and disability. So, and what I mean by that, obviously delinquents, we're talking tax delinquents. Those have been my bread and butter um, since I like kind of started and in getting into the deals defaults when they default on their mortgage uh you know the pre-foreclosures um and then we have the uh what did i say divorce so divorce i have like relationships with different like maybe like divorce attorneys that may send me stuff you know just and it's just networking you know just networking relationships building stuff there um death that's gonna be probate you know what i mean we'll talk about you know after someone passes um to go really kind of crazy I've done it before. Um, you can network to um, to funeral homes. You know what I mean? Let them know, like, hey, if you know some people that, you know, maybe got family members that, you know, no, because it's like, no, you're laughing, but. Okay. No, I'm laughing because I'm picturing you at Golden Gate. Like, what's up? No, I'm it's not. It's No, 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 no. I'm not going to say what's up, but I'm, I'm like, I'm going to come in with a spill and everything, you know, but. The thing is, like, sometimes if people are in a situation and they don't have life insurance, but they may have this property or this land, we can buy it cash and we can help them get their family buried with also having money in their pocket. 
You know what I mean? Like it's not the ideal situation, but if you don't have any other recourse and you can't get the GoFundMe's going or, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's a, it's stressful. You know what I mean? So that could be a situation. And then, uh, what was the other one? Disaster or, you know, when, when the disasters happen, people either, you know, they're going to fix it up or they're going to flee. That's a great one. And then disability, what I mean by disability, um, I just kind of made that one up, but it's uh, the nursing homes. So I will market to the nursing homes um, when they have family members for them to pay, you know what I'm saying, pay for their, their stays and stuff. Yeah. So. And oh, I got that's kind of freaking thousands. dope. <laughs> the right. 16th, the way you just laid that out. I've yeah. never heard anybody lay it out like that. Yeah, that's and freaking I, did, I did a deal like that. Uh, it was actually in Kansas. Uh, from somebody actually I used to work with uh, for the disability one. And I was just like, what? And so I was like, so after that, I was just like, okay, how many nursing homes do I got in, you know what I'm saying, a certain area? And then you just, just hit them up. That's it. That is like so are you Are you hitting up the, the, the actual nursing home, like the actual um, companies? Or what do you mean by uh, I mean like the facility, nursing? yeah, the facility. Yeah, the actual facility and reaching out to them and, and just well, letting I'm them know. Out to them. No, I'm not re reaching out to like the person that's like, maybe like the administrator, I guess. Like, you know, if right. they, you know, the decision maker, like, hey, I wouldn't mind maybe talking to your, like your case managers. The case managers are the ones that's dealing with the families. You know what I mean? So like if grandma or grandpa is coming out to go live in, you know, in that situation, but hey, they not, they not going to move into the house. They live in their own houses. So, okay. Do you need to sell the house or what the, what is the situation? You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I do it, you know, networking and stuff with the, with the uh, case managers. Wowzers. Yeah. We, we learned from the last episode that a lot of times generational wealth just isn't necessarily passed on through real estate because the heirs don't necessarily know how to take care of the home so i just it's like psh, you thinking yeah. of that and doing that man yeah, that's dope, just dope episode by the way i love chris yeah oh uh, thank you yeah but just you saying that and piggybacking off of that it's just like reaffirmation mm -hmm. yeah, is a key, and it's the way they go right and even if you're like i'm a huge history buff like if you think about the history just in you know america it's like we you like we used to own like so much like land and and property and all these different stuff and it's just like when you think about the 70s and the 80s war on drugs the section a boom like all this stuff whatever it's like other generations a little bit before me probably my mom's generation or my older cousins that generation was selling off a lot of their parents and grandparents properties mm -hmm. i don't know what's going on with them like i don't know but that's just what be happening like even when i go to all the meetings and stuff they just they can't keep up on the, the back taxes they don't take care of the properties it's so many labor liens it's just a lot of i don't know so man that's just like an untapped market like i, I mean it's just so fascinating to hear that so tell me this like uh, with this pandemic and everything going on and like Corona, you know, we always talk about, hey, this is when millionaires are made, right? So like what what strategy has been the most lucrative for you right now? Or I would say has been the most productive since we talk about being busy versus productive. What strategy has been the most productive for you right here doing just this pandemic? Um, the most effective strategy for me right now still and always is I love tax delinquents. Those are my babies. Like I just, wow. I just, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's the bread and butter because people don't have the money to pay the taxes. And it's like, we're coming up, we're, we're solving solutions. Like we're, 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 you know, we're solving problems with solutions. Sorry. But you know, it's, I just, I love tax delinquents. Um, defaults have been, they've been pretty all right too. Like, I mean, because people are in a situation where they've lost their jobs or they've lost this, or they, you know, don't know really what is next, you know, if they're not already back at work or not, you know, I'm fortunate enough and blessed to, you know, still be in my nine to five. Um, cause I'm working COVID projects, you know, FEMA's working COVID projects. That's what we're doing. So, you that's know, that's right. Mm -hmm. You freaking I'm doing this and faster. you essential. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working the disaster. So it's just like, you know, and it's hurricane season now. So. Exactly. When you said that, like disaster time, I was thinking your job is really almost seasonal or cyclical with the business, with the, with the disasters, because right now this is about to be hype of, of your, of your season with all these disasters right. and stuff that are coming on. So this is really the time for you to like delegate 
in order to keep the everything else running um, right. with your day to day and things like that. Can I just get a little bit more into tax liens? Don't get mad at me, ladies. With, oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit more into tax liens. I just want to talk about your particular strategy. We just had somebody on as well, kind of talking about tax liens, and he kind of talked about his strategy. Talk about your strategy uh, with tax liens and how you've been successful. Okay, so with tax delinquent, um, with tax delinquent property, so you know you can pull the information from the county. You know you search through the properties, uh, skip trace them same way, um, and pretty much like my process is, I just like I find the people, like I just find them um, if they're if they're past, try to find the kin, like anybody that I can find, um, and just reach out to them. Just reach out. Yeah, I reach out to them, and I typically I just offer something on top of what they already owe. But it's sometimes maybe how I word it, I word it a little different, so I word it in a way where I'm like, you know. I can offer you, you know, $5,000 and then I'll handle the back taxes. You know what I mean? And if the back taxes are 10, then it's 15 that's on my purchase price. You see what I'm saying? But I don't get them all confused by like saying 15,000, but that's not what they're going to get. I'm saying the amount what they're going to get. You know what I mean? So they'll know. Yeah, they're walking away the, with. Yeah, with exactly what they're walking away with. I don't try to confuse them by oh you know gotta start doing the math and all this stuff like no i'm i'm gonna offer you three thousand cash in your pocket you know what i'm saying and i'll handle the risk that's what i tell them and and it gets done because a lot of times um when i do do property because you know I, I focus on like uh, land a lot so uh, when i do do property um when i do property a lot of times if i get like 10 contracts i may wholesale five or I may wholesale seven and I'm going to buy or keep the rest. I'll partner with other people for us to buy it and then for us to build on it. That's kind of how I do. It's just, it's collaboration over competition for me. And yeah. that's how I've been networking and winning. Like I just partner with people and I, you know, tell people and I share the knowledge or whatever with them. And if they're willing to do the work, we can partner all day because I have the network, you know, and the resources to get it done. So. I like that collaboration over competition. That's so, mm -hmm. so we'll be collaborating. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. okay. For sure. I'm all um, for so it. can you talk to us a little bit about like what the market is doing now? Like I know you talked about like how you, your marketing has changed with COVID, but like can you talk about like what the, the market is like in the areas you focus in? Um, so DFW, like, the, you know, y'all know the Metroplex is different, you know, than kind of any other area. Um, for me, well, to me, do y'all mean like, you mean retail or you mean like investing? Like, which, which way? Both. I mean, insights. Okay, okay. For, <laughs> okay, for me, for retail, and I'm not a realtor, um, but I do have like an amazing realtor on my team because um, she invests as well. So mm -hmm. she's an amazing realtor with that aspect of it. But um for me, the market in DFW, it's just, it's trash. Like it's, it's overpriced. You know what I mean? We got houses that's like 960 square feet selling for like 220. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, son, what is going on? Like this is not New York, B. It's not New York, <laughs> you know? So I'm just like, you know, can we get some regular size houses? You know, the fix and flips are trash. It's like, just have some type of vision. You know, like I deal with a, a, a guy who's in Houston. He's a designer, uh, Tyron, and he, designs these beautiful homes from who they were little homes at first in Houston and then he makes them to where they're like you know a, a nice size for a starter for a family you know so then it's worth the 220 you know what I mean but it's like here like nobody has that vision and I'm just like this is trash so like when I'm buying the land or whatever I'm trying to build something nice for people for starter homes or whatever it may be for a family like nobody can do anything if, if it's a husband and a wife with maybe like one kid or two kids maybe, you know, in a 960 square foot home, that's an apartment. Like we're in Texas. We're not in, you know, on top of each other, like in a, like in a metro area like that, you know? So. That's but, so funny. Exactly. Yeah. Can you, uh, you mentioned like when you build, can you talk a little bit more about that and like about your new construction project? Like, oh yeah so so yeah so my new construction project uh it's uh the, the okay so i bought the land cash and so i have a, a builder that i'm working with a gray lady by the way um she's going to finance my build and you know then we're just gonna sell it for profit 
So, and I'll do that like a few times here uh, from the lots that, you know, that I bought through wholesaling, you know, lead generation myself and, you know, get my own deals, cherry pick, whatever. Um, so I'll do a few of that. And then um, she just, it's just pretty dope. Like you just, you buy your land, you pay the closing costs, um, you pay for your permits and your, your, uh, your permits and your plans and that's it. And then you profit, you know what I'm saying? Like after, after the sale or whatever. And a lot of times it's sold before it even um, is finished. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that would be the new project. It's in Oak Cliff. Uh, it's uh, 75241, uh, not too far from Paul Quinn. And so and then I'll be working on another one that'll be in 75215. So, so is that the direction you're headed in? Is new construction or he's going to? Yeah, for sure. New construction, um, development, um, that's what I'm that's, that's what I want to go towards. Because um, coming from being an environmental scientist, looking at the commercial development side, it's definitely doable. It's just having all the right pieces together and the right resources. But I mean, it's literally, you know, copy and paste. Like you just, I mean, take other plans and just put the same thing on yours. There's no reason to, you know, try to do something new. It's already, done. the blueprint is already there for you. Same exact same thing Chris said, right? Why reinvent the wheel? Yeah, no need to. No need to. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I just want a slice of the pie from the wheel. From the wheel. That's all I need. Yeah. What is that? What's the average timeline of your deals? Um, for my deals, um, because I do not market my deals. Um, I don't market them on Craigslist, Facebook, none of that stuff. I don't do any of that. Um, probably like two to three weeks after I've gotten it under contract, because my buyer is already ready. You know what I mean? Like I, I just text them and um, I'm like, hey, I'm saying I got the property <laughs> like, you know, and it's just, you know, we close in like two to three weeks or whatever. Sometimes it's like seven days. It just depends on the buyer. But I do not market my deals. No, I don't need to. Yeah, I don't have to. So hold on. Let's dive a little bit. more. How do you get to that level? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I was just going to say, like, when you, when you are, like, learning how to do wholesaling, like, they keep talking about, like, build your buyer's list, build your like, buyer's list, and learn how to market to your buyer's list. Like, okay, so sis is saying, no, like, I know who my buyer is when I get the deal. Like, did you, when you get the deal, do you have the buyer in mind, or? Look, um, I've built the relationship with a lot of builders, a lot of developers, a lot of uh, fix and flippers. Um, and I'm very, very good with research. I'm really, really good at research because that's all I used to do as, as an environmental scientist. So I stay in my lane of that. And a lot of times these guys don't do their own lead generation. So they send me the leads that they're looking at. And when I go get them, they're already sold. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I don't hit them over the head. I know some wholesalers are like, oh my God, why would I get the most? Well, because I'm building a relationship with them. You know, I have a builder that's like willing to do, um, you know, we have like a thing where we're working on like 20 lots and it's, you know, five contract. you do the math, you know, that's 20 times 5,000. It's, I still make my money. So it's fine, you know? I just love how like you're saying this like so meek and mild and like you got your hand like oh like you know it's nothing like, I don't know what to tell <laughs> no, you. <laughs> no, 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 it's not bad. It's just like um I think people think it's like um a lot of people always are like, you know, um, how did you start investing? Like how did you da 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 da? I just did it. Yeah. Like, I just I went and bought some baby signs. I went and paid my last hundred dollars. Um you know what I mean? Like to go to a RIA and go through a three day weekend thing and, and, and network and stuff. I was at, I go to eight, well, I used to, while I had a job, I went to eight networking events a month with a nine to five. Wow. Out work, I out hustle. You know what I'm saying? Like I just out hustled everybody. Exactly. Yeah, like it's just you have to network. Like you have to network and do good business. That's it. Yeah. You don't got to be out. Yeah. And, and and being trifling to people just do good business that's it and it sounds like when you have when you approach it with that mindset and you have that attitude it's not hard like you can't it's have not. that it's you know yeah, it's have an abundance of mindset like I know like yeah. a deal passed me up or I go to the next deal and it's not just really working for me or whatever I know another one coming in 15 minutes bro like I'm not I'm not gonna, you know, get over on you just because like it's dealing with money. Like we're not gonna fall out over ten thousand. We're trying to make ten million. Yeah. Exactly. 
we not we not on it. so yeah. <sighs> Mic drop. It's just it's just like a, a that abundance mindset, right? My broker mm-hmm. always talks about real estate just being an abundance mindset. I mean, that's something I hear for everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's uh, something I hear for everybody. Like, oh, it's coming. It, it, you it's know, so much just out be there, patient. Like, Right. Yeah, you just gotta be patient, wait for the right opportunity to come, and it's gonna come. You know what I mean? I love that. I'm and while you're saying be patient, understand. I'll tell you another thing. You know, I started in 2016. Um, seven, I like seven deals didn't go through before I got my first deal. You know what I mean? Like it was a lot. Um, I went through a bout of like me being homeless. Like it, it was just a lot of stuff that was going on in 2017. I just, I never stopped listening to podcasts. I never stopped listening to motivational speakers. Like, I just kept, I just, I want it so bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want it so bad. And it's just like, and then it's like, when that first deal happened, it was over because so many more deals and it just opportunities that just kept coming. Like, so it just, it's like a, it's like a fall. You know like what I mean? Snowball. It's like, yeah, like, it's like that snowball mm-hmm. effect. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm getting chills right now. Um, oh, yeah, I don't even know what dope. to say, y'all. <laughs> that's that's just, how you know you hitting. If, if when Courtney gets the chills, that's how you know you hit. <laughs> I'm dope. for real, because I mean, like everything you're saying, I, I could just, you know, I, I feel it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, is the the learning curve in this business is really steep. You know, there's so many ways that deals can fall through. And there's so many ways, there's so many ways to win, right? Who, who was your, um, who was your mentor? Like who kind of guided you through the process? Um, I had a lot of mentors and I still do, um, to this day. Like, um, I have a lot of mentors. I have a lot of coaches. Um, Max Maxwell, honestly, like I know Max started in, I think 2015, 2016, um, I first met Max in 2018 and Brian Irigbu. Um, those guys helped me a lot. Uh, Christina Spells, like crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Um, Ty Fleming, like it's just, it's so many people that have helped me um, to where, you know, it, it made me want to deep dive like more, you know what I'm saying, into this business. And that's why like everything on those D's, those six D's that I gave y'all, I have yeah. printed out copy of my, like of the laws for it. The tax delinquent laws, I printed it out from Office Depot and it's binded. I can tell you the law, you know what I mean? Like you have to really learn your craft and study it and not just, you know, be out here trying to do it. No, just really do it because you got to educate your sellers. Like you just said, it's so many ways a deal can fall through. But if you know what you're talking about and you know the, um, like the process or that of the tax delinquents or the uh, pre-foreclosures, you'll know how to solve it. You'll know how to solve it every time. And, and this is what you got to do. You got to have 50 solutions for one problem. You know, and that takes time. Like you're not going to learn time. that overnight. You <laughs> nope. know what I mean? Nope. Like it is... Like, I think people think that it's, it's going to come quick. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And maybe you'll listen to a few podcasts, right. take a few notes, <laughs> sip some yeah. wine, and I'm going right. to get this deal. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and, and, and I mean uh, in a wholesaling deal, yeah, it can come in 30 days. It can come in two weeks. I'm not, and I'm not saying that that can't happen because it can happen. But the thing is, my journey was different. You know what I mean? My journey was different. I've been on this ground since 2016 and I'm not looking to nobody else's journey or nobody else's marathon, sprint, whatever, just my own journey. I'm in a situation now, like, it's good. You know what I mean? Like, it's good. And it's just like, and it's, it's overwhelming of like the support that I get and the joy that I get. Like, I just, I love seeing people win. Like, that's just, I just love it. You know? So. We say this often. I say this often. Um, even especially as encouragement. And I say, you know, when you're walking in your purpose, that's when you know that you're doing something right because that's when the snowball effect happens, right? Mm -hmm. When you start doing, and when you do, like you said, when you do good business and you do right by people, then that's when the snowball effect happens. And that's like the model that I live by because even when my husband and I were like, dang, why, you know, people be like, oh, y'all are too nice in business. You too, you know, and it happens all the time. I, I am too nice, but it's one of those things that it's like, even with our contractors, whatever, you know, and it's just like, but we also have like, we're not those cutthroat people. So 
when you do good business and when it you, when you're walking in your purpose, then the snowball effect happens, and it does not happen overnight. Like you said, it does right. take time. So, right. yeah, man, your yeah. testimony right now is and I and I'm and I'm like I'm too nice too as well. I'm too <laughs> nice. Um, but now you know I have um I had to get a new attorney um. I had to get a new attorney. My attorney passed in May, but I had to get a new attorney, real estate attorney. And um, he's on retainer and he's like really, really like sharp. He's very, very sharp. And um, so for NDAs, um, contracts in play, like I'm the whole not because I am too nice and I, I have gotten messed over before mm-hmm. and I just it just can't happen anymore. And I could be nice with a smile and you still got to sign this NDA. You know, you still got to sign these other stuff, these contracts in place because I've been too nice, you know, like it's just, it just, it happens yeah. because of my heart. Like I'm just, I'm just, just want to see everybody win. You want to see everybody, but you know, you can't do that all the time. Everybody can't go with you all the time. Right. That's a whole word. So, yeah. okay. Let's shift gears while I start shouting. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> the, the chills are here. <laughs> all right, sis. Um, <laughs> okay. You mentioned before that you are starting a Black Real Estate Investor Association, and that is major, especially in Dallas, because um, it's a lot of us in real estate. Like, if you go to the RIAs, you see Black people there, but it's we are not running the meeting. Um, so what, what made you, what brought about the creation of this, and what's your vision for? Okay, so what a, what brought about the creation of the Dallas Black Rio? Um, okay, uh, George Floyd's death is what ignited it. Um, like I said, I have those journals. So I actually looked at a journal from 2016 when I started, maybe like December. Um, it's actually in my notebook that I wanted to start a Black Rio group. I don't, and I looked at, I was like, what? Like, cause I don't throw any of my notebooks away. And it was just so crazy to fast forward now that it's actually here, but it was never something that was still just on my mind, on my mind, on my mind. Um, But when that situation happened and how crazy social media got and everything that was going on in the country and then going on in the world, cause Black Lives Matter went all around the world with the protests. um, A lot of the investors here in our community um it was talking wild reckless and i was like yo son you know i've i've went to networking events with these people i broke bread with these people like i've you know what i'm saying i've invested with these people like i've spent money at events with these people like you know charity deals whatever like it don't matter software whatever it doesn't matter and like for you to talk crazy and out the side of your neck like that bro those people look just like me they look just like me. And it ain't no, oh, you're for me because I'm different than other black people. No, I am black people. What are you talking about? Like, it's no difference of this or this or whatever. Like, it don't matter. You saw I'm saying, I, I ain't OJ. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm not OJ. Yeah. I'm black, baby. Like, it's crazy. So it's just, it rubbed me the wrong way. And I got with a group of people that, you know, are specialized in other different areas of me that I've been knowing for a minute, you know, in our area. And we just, we just started it. And we was just like, you know, it's no egos. We're not going to be making no money from it as something that's getting paid out. You know what I mean? Like that is literally just a space for us. Because same thing like Ebony said, I would go to different networking. You know, here, there, everywhere. And uh, here, there, everywhere. And we are sprinkled and speckled around. And that's fine. That's cool. You know, no biggie, whatever. Um, But we just, we need our own space too. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like I said, I'm on the land stuff. I'm on the development stuff. Um, I, I talked to Chris about it. Um, you know, he's definitely supporting us. Um, I love it. And, you know, we're going to do this. You know, it's going to be good for DFW. And I've been very uh, appreciative and I'm so thankful for um, the city, um, how they've been reaching out. And everybody's just, everybody just loves it. And I'm, I'm thankful for the, uh, the support, for sure. I'm really, I... I, folks who can't, who not watching, like, I just jumped up and down for joy, literally, in my seat. I'm so glad you said the reason for starting it was because of Joy Floyd and out of reaction to what people were saying, because mm-hmm. I'm in some of those groups, and I'm a newbie. Like, I'm, I'm, I've only been investing for, like, a year, so I'm still trying to understand the lay of the land, 
And you're right. The way people talk so reckless, it's like, oh, you don't give a damn about me. Mm-hmm. And it is really hurtful. So the fact that you are, are taking this initiative to create a space for black people in real estate investing so that we can, you know, build up our own community, like that just makes my heart jump for joy. Like I, I am full. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I, I know COVID is going on. So a lot of people aren't able to be in person. Um, how are you guys kind of navigating that with the pandemic? Did it push back the timeline? What's going on with that? Um, it has pushed back the timeline a little bit. Um, and that's why we did like the launch just for the, you know, for the emails and different things like that. So we can continue to update people. Um, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do it because it's going to be a membership base. And then a part of that membership, of course, you're going to have different things that's going to come with that, um, along with smaller deals, large deals that we, you know, may crowdfund, that we may not we raise money, you know, different groups and sectors. But like, Ebony, if you and Kim have a deal, you know, and maybe y'all need whatever capital it's a group that's over here that you're a member of that, you know what I'm saying? You can get that capital from them if they want to be passive. That's the mission and that's the goal, but also educating us on that. It doesn't have to be wholesaling. It's so many other platforms with wholesaling. That's not the only way you can start with, you know, real estate investing, even on the retail side, you don't have to start wholesaling. So, you know what I mean? So to make your money work for you by investing and owning real estate. So for us right now, we were thinking about doing like, you know, maybe a registration RSV type, RSVP type, RSVP type thing and do like, um, uh, you know, maybe just a few people and, you know, on, on certain days, like maybe a Saturday and a Sunday and then the following weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday for just like a meet and greet, everybody gets to know each other, but then it's like, it's not everybody, you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know how we're going to do it. Like, I really don't. I, well, best of luck to you. And like, like I said before, it's awesome. I love to see it. We love to see it. Um, and, and I know it's going to be dynamic uh, once you guys get everything off the ground. Um, Appreciate so it. what, what would be your advice? Just however, I know you dropped some like major gems uh, so far. Already, right? Yeah, you've been like mic dropping <laughs> this whole time. But like, what would be your advice for someone who's interested in investing or maybe they've already started investing, you know, they've tried to get some deals going and it hasn't worked and now they feel stuck. Like, what what would you say to that person? Uh, I would say to them, like, just, I mean, keep trying, like, keep going. Like, don't let no stop you. Um, they need to read the book, uh, Go for the No. Um that's what I read. When I first started, my goal was to get a hundred no's. Like you need to not be afraid of uh, yeah. you know, As a child, like, and I don't know if any of y'all have children. I don't have kids, but like as a kid, when little kids be asking, like my little cousins, I could tell them no, they're coming right back in 15 minutes. To, you know what I mean? Like, what about now? 15 you know? minutes, girl. Little demons. Little demons. They're coming right saying. back in seconds. <laughs> exactly. So they don't know the rejection of like, but as we get older and we start, you know, like as adults and young adults, we, oh no, they gonna tell me no. Oh no, they gonna tell me no. So you already have no. The worst I can tell you is like, no, <laughs> get away from me. Leave me alone. Take me off your collar cut you out, whatever, like, but did you die? No, you didn't. You didn't yeah. die. So keep calling, keep reaching out, keep trying, get out of this, uh, what's that, analysis paralysis stuff? Like, you know it, stop overthinking, bro, and just do it. You know what I'm saying? You're talking to Ebony. Oh, am I? Okay, just- Ebony. We're going to have to meet up, Ebony. <laughs> okay, no, but she is, because, okay, I put myself out there. I'm not afraid, so... I work in sales, work in software sales, now I'm in industrial automation sales. I could do that all day long, but for some reason, when it comes to this, and when I got started, I literally had to pull Kim in, in a room and be like, teach me how to do this. Show me how to make the calls, do it. And like some, I, and I, I remember like, somebody hung up Kim, Are you and sure? I was like, oh my God, I can't believe they just said that. And I just turned it to like cotton candy. 
So uh, mm-hmm. I'm still battling with that a little bit, just to be t- fully transparent. I think most recently I told Kim, I was like, you know what? I can't take it. I'll send the, I'll send the text to your number. <laughs> I was like, like, I don't know what to say. Ebony, I was like, you just but, talked to them. Right, Ebony, but why? Like, what's the reason why? You know, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said fear of rejection. Like, and there is like such a heavy fear of rejection fear of rejection you see on the internet like what people have to say about real estate investors like people thinking it's a scam people think and I know it's not, I used to I used to work in foreclosure I used to work in bankruptcy like mm-hmm. I've worked end to end I know what's gonna happen if you don't you know get rid of that house but there's still that like internal battle that I have so you know yeah just being fully transparent is something I definitely battle with which is yeah. weird because she does sales for a living. So That's what I was just going to say. Because I, and so well. Why, and right, <laughs> and she's and giving me why, advice on sales. Which is why <laughs> I don't get it. Because she, she will take rejection all day, every day with that. But then I'm like, it's the same thing. Like, it's literally <laughs> the same thing. Why is this such an issue? It's just like, I don't, you know, and it's just a comfort level, right? When you, yeah. when you feel like you're new or you feel like, oh, they're going to know. They're going to see through me. No, they don't. They don't know. Right. And there's an option. If they knew, if they, they wouldn't be in the position that they are in. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. they don't know. And yeah. also, I was going to say, too, Ebony, um, because, like, it is sales, like how she, like how Kim was saying, like, but I'm not a, I'm not a salesperson. Like, I'm always like, you know, if somebody is like, uh, you know, they want a hundred thousand, I'm like, okay, I'll give you a hundred thousand. Like, I'm not the type of person to be like, no, nah, take 75 or take 65. Like, I'm not like that. No, I'm negotiating everything. <laughs> right, right. But what I would do though, like with different things, I, um, I build rapport with them. Like the deal that I'm working on now, like he wants me to get it because of the relationship. Yeah. This is a relationship yeah. business. I just build the rapport. You know what I mean? But you are a salesman. You're selling yourself. Mm-hmm. You've and sold that, yourself. Maybe I am. Maybe. Yeah. And you you yeah. sold yourself on just, you know, just being honest and, and keeping mm-hmm. it real. 100. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I like door knocking. Door knocking is my preferred method of like contact. A lot of people don't like it because uh, they're like, how do I do it with, with a job with a nine to five? Uh, duh, like I just go do it. <laughs> See, like I, I need that energy. Go do it. <laughs> you have like a level, excuse me, if any children, you have a level of fuck it in your system that I need. Of like course. that's, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what I need. So yeah, we'll talk about you need that. You need that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the, I'm the friend that just like pushes you off the cliff like girl go you're saying everything I didn't already said to her I'd right. be like, well, well yeah we'll talk okay we'll talk <laughs> yeah I like it so you talked about motivation so much and you talked about just like what motivates you in that book can you drop the that book again that motivates you it was uh, called no something with no oh, in it no. what was that go go for the no uh go for the no yeah it's called go for the no i don't know right. but hold on let me see go for the no it's a real easy read um super easy book uh it's not a picture book for those that don't like to read but whatever uh it's about richard fenton richard fenton that's who it's okay. about go for All the right. no. yes is the destination and no is how you get there that's the whole name of the book Richard Fenton. Mm-hmm. I just I just realized I took Ebony's thunder there. She, that's that's, that's my question. <laughs> no, that is my question. But you know, <laughs> I, I don't need to ask no more books because I need to apply what I've already read. <laughs> there you go. Analysis. That's right. real. She knows it and she's reading it and she's going over it. She's just not implementing it. Yeah. That's so funny because it's like my mentor yeah. kind of told me. I was asking him, hey, what should I be looking at? What should I be listening? He was like, nothing. Nothing. Just start doing. <laughs> Just start doing. Exactly. Just, That's and me. yeah, don't read I nothing need, else. No, I need to read stuff because I'm the doer. And then, yeah, I'm the fuck upper. <laughs> but, but you know but what, Kim? That's the but, way Kim to learn. but it's good. The best, what's the, and the best experience is experience. Like, you know what I'm saying? The best teacher is experience. Yeah. Like, it gives me a little way. anxiety, though, at this age. At this point in my life with these kids, it gives me a little anxiety. A little anxiety. Yeah, yeah I'm real risky, though. Know. I'm real risky out here, though. So, like, me but too, I, do, me too. I do read, but I, that, but I have the time to read and do all this stuff in my nine to five. I don't know how you have time. Okay, I don't know how you have the time to do any of this, actually, because I really want to ask you about how do you have time to do your other businesses with all of this, because you have vending machines. How do you all have time for all of this? Oh, well, because I don't, like, I don't do the operation side. 
family doing it. That's how I'm venturing with them. Uh, like doing the stuff on like the, you know, the, you know, the the capital, going in with the capital, setting up the initial, you know, ads, um, you know, the formation, the business bank account, the websites, and da 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 da. We're gonna outsource and do all the other stuff on the operation side once they're getting the locations. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not and then the same thing with the trucking. My dad has his CDO, so he's gonna run that for yeah. Okay. It's not, yeah, it's not, I'm not because I, I can't focus on all of it. I only focus on real estate. I stay in my lane with it, but that doesn't mean I can't have like don't box me in though. You know, like don't box me in. Like, you know, I'm just not all just like it's business. You know, I'm a businesswoman. So it's like don't box me in, you know. So, I like it. Mm-hmm. Man. This has just been like cathartic. Okay, Courtney, do your thing, girl. Do your do wait, your wait, thing. no, one more. <laughs> what? I'm ready for the fun part. Okay, we're just gonna fun part. All right. So since we're talking about your wholesales and stuff, we'll talk about your wholesales. Um, you know, I, it says if time permits, and I'm making time permit. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. What okay. is your average? Because our, this is stuff that the listeners want to know, right? This is the motivation part, the money. What is your average deal? Um, what do you make on your average deal? deal? Well, my average deal, because what I do on land, like I was saying, I don't hit them over the head. So if I'm, when I'm flipping land, I'm making anywhere from like three to five or three to 10, different things like that. But I'm coming from the same buyer. So if my same buyer grabs 20 of my contracts, I'll let 5,000 each. It's the hundred thousand dollars. So. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I buy them myself. So, like, I don't really wholesale. Like, I don't assign a lot because I don't do volume. I don't, that's not, I don't want to do volume. Wholesaling is active income. I'm trying to get to passive income so I can walk away from the nine to five. Yeah. So, like, when I'm purchasing this stuff and for me to build, the goal is to build to rent. Like, that's, when I build these new houses, I build to rent. You know, and that's a whole different, you know, lane that going into, but that's the passive income, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now to the fun part. <laughs> I'm now okay. day, I just got to get a call. <laughs> um, What's the fun part? The fun part. This is the fun part. The whole thing is the fun part. We're learning. Okay. We're, we're educational. I'm always, I always want to know about the deals and the income, you know, and things like that. But I, I you want to word it to where you're not like being tacky, you know what I mean? You know, and, and, but I'm glad, I'm glad she's right. You know, people want to know about that stuff and, and that's the important in regards to the growth because people want to know, hey, is this lucrative enough for me to either keep my nine to five or do I need to, um, or can I quit my nine to five? You know what I mean? And, and do that, right? So I think it's important. Um, the, 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 the rapid fire where we ask you, uh, these, are, these are Ebony and Kim's, Kim's questions. And uh, the question, the one that's Kim's is the, the music. <laughs> okay. what, what is the last song you heard? What's the last song you listened to? The last song I listened to? What was the last song you listened to? Oh, Southside the Realist. Southside the Realist. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> Love you, Portia. Like, you don't even know this. We all hang out. Like, I'm yeah. coming to get you. <laughs> we gonna hang so, out. So, Southside the Realist. Okay. So, what what is your what's your go to playlist? Like, when you when you just close a deal and and things are things are popping and you hype. Like, what's your what's your music? Uh, like, what's, no, you need okay. to get no. You need to pick like a like a go to artist. Like, what's your go to artist? See, it's, it's so many though. Like, I do have a money bags playlist though. It's called money bags. A money bags playlist. I got a money bags playlist. Yeah. So it's a it's multiple artists on there, but like you know, like um, it's payroll Giovanni. Shout out to Detroit. I don't know if y'all <laughs> about Detroit out there, but payroll Giovanni goes so hard. He's talking about money, building wealth. Like, dude is like, man, he goes hard. And then OT Genesis, like OT, getting to the money. Yeah. Everybody. Same 24 hours. Yeah, SB. Yeah. Yep, I like it. Mm-hmm. All right. So Ebony's question is um is movies. Movies? When you <laughs> these are when, if you if you watch it, if you watch something and you've seen it a million times, but this one show up, which uh which movie are you you don't care you watching it? Paid in full. Paid in full, shut up. 
That is you so OG, believable. For real. Like, I feel like in your former life, you, you used to push weight. Like, you used yeah. to Bruh, oh my God, Ebony, we gotta hang out. Cause I'm, <laughs> hold on, let me life. tell y'all this. No, let me tell y'all this because like when I do, and I like to my systems. So I always be like, okay, I buzz down zips. Cause the DFW is one Metroplex, right? So I'd be like, oh, let me buzz down these zips. But I'm talking about zip codes. <laughs> That is so <laughs> funny. We're not talking about no, uh, you know what I'm saying? But I really, I love. in my head, I'll be like, yo, we moving this. We you know, flipping, we moving. Wait, yes. wait. exactly. Oh, yeah. wait. <laughs> but it's paper, it. it's paper or it's bricks, you know what I mean? But house, house bricks. Or, <laughs> you know, oh my God, you just got a whole you know different I mean? code of language. <laughs> just the front it's door. so real. Like, oh, I was going to say, Paid in full or belly? Like, you get, you just, yeah, you I know. love paid in full. Like, that's my ish. Like, I love paid in full. It's my jam. It's my jam. That shit is crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I love Long episodes. Okay. All right. So, when when you can move around and, and do, you know, whatever it is that you want to do that's on your bucket list, what you doing? A uh, bucket list. Oh, uh, where you going? Oh, well, okay. Bucket list is kind of real estate, but uh, it's buying. I want to go buy land back in Africa. Um, I just came back from Africa, so, dope. so I want to buy land back in Africa. That is a bucket list item. Where'd you I, go? Um, I went to South Africa, but I want to go back to Ghana and I want to go to Nigeria and I want to purchase land over there. That's that's a bucket list item for me that I want to do. Um, it's business in there too, but I want to go back because I mean South Africa was amazing, girls. Like, and I went. Yeah. Over, it was just it was amazing. Um, tears of joy, like just because I was so happy just being there. You know, they were so welcoming, so loving, and I feel like every African American needs to go to a country in Africa. Like it was amazing. Yeah. Man, My heart is full. I'm just. It was a, that was complete. Mm. Yeah. That, there's nothing left to say. That was just a complete episode, and it was. It felt like just the one of the most genuine, just realist, lay it all out there. I mean, um, I really, I really appreciated that. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, coming mm. on Real Women Real Estate. I appreciate Thank you, y'all. Portia. Thank you for having me, Portia. You just became Ebony and I's best friend. So when we call you, don't act brand new. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. We actually we can do uh, like our own Zoom, like for sure. I know because I know I already had her text text you the other day, but I got we've been no, I got like y'all. seriously. I will say this, like Portia, me and you've been messaging back and forth on Instagram, like mm-hmm. just like kind of reaching out, and mm-hmm. you are probably like one of the most genuine, like down to earth people that I've ever met. Yeah. You deserve all the success you have, sis. Like keep. I well, appreciate yeah. you. It's very yeah, it, it definitely comes across for sure. Mm-hmm. I appreciate y'all for sure. Oh, that energy yeah. given is oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but definitely Kim, Ebony. Um, I saw y'all at the uh, you know, Texas Tuesday. Um, you know, that's another plug too. That's where a lot of my buyers came from. Uh, just to let newbies know, um, they the ones that got the cash. You know, it's not on Facebook. It's not on Craigslist. Yeah, you can get one every now and then on there, but that's Go do some networking. It's buyers yep. on there for you sure. You gotta get out. They you gotta, gotta get away from the desk, the computer. Yeah, you gotta get away from it and go. You know, do that. Like get out there, and that's where your buyers are. At, you know. What and I mean? they have cash money because I'm cash over here. Money. Like, how are y'all here? I'm asking people, how are you here? What are you using? Hard money lender? No, I got cash. Like they be cash. having back, they be having backpacks. Uh, they be having them in the Manila folders. Like they be having it in suitcases and stuff. Cash money. They said with the casket the checks. They said they come with different denominations. Uh-huh. I mean, put me on game because I was like, yep. what? Was like, Do y'all have lenders? And he was like, No, this is cash. Like, yeah. cash money. It's cash. Yep. And that's where a lot of my buyers will come from from the auctions. So it's really like that's why like on Tuesdays, um, you know, and sometimes yeah, I take off work, mental health day, whatever. You know, it's cool. Uh, you know, and uh, go, I, you know, I go to the auction, you know, and and yeah, and I make those connections, go back to work, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, that's where you get your buyers from. Go to them auctions, man. Like they're there, that's what they want because they don't gotta compete, they're competing at the auction. But if yeah. you link with them and they tell you what you want, go find it and they gonna they gonna pay you. Yeah, yep. I like it. 
All right. Yeah. All right, y'all. This we done already put a bow on it. You know what it is. Real <laughs> estate. <laughs> we done oh, signed off. You. Where can they find you? Uh on Instagram, it's uh it's at is the Portia Edmund. And then um on Facebook, just Portia Edmund and Twitter is Lynn Lady214. Mm. Yeah, because I love I like that. Yeah. You so Dallas. I love it. I'm so Dallas, man. <laughs> I love my city, Triple D, man. That's, I love it. I love, love it. it. Dope. Okay. All right. We're going to let y'all go. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Until next time. All right. See Peace. Y'all All right.